Well, it's quarter to five here at the Oval and the day has been ceased. No more pay thanks to Rain, Nasser Hussain, DK as well, joining me here. Disappointing end to what started off as a magnificent start to the day with the guard of honour from the Australian teams for Stuart Broad. Yeah, in bright sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> now, it was bright sunshine. We were at the top of those stairs and the Australians went past us and you'd got inside knowledge that they were going to give, them, give Stuart a guard of honour. And then we walked down and the atmosphere out there was unbelievable. It really was. I, I said at the time, usually that's like at midday, it starts filling up this crowd and this ground. But they were here half ten ready. They wanted to see Stuart, Stuart Broad and Jimmy Anderson <laughs> go out to bat, you know. Um, and Jimmy's birthday boy with his best mate playing his last game of cricket. Not just his last game for England, his last ever game of cricket. And as they walked out, um, Stuart Broad walked through the guard of honour and then the guard of honour sort of stayed there. And Steve Smith signalled to Jimmy Anderson, are you going to walk through the guard of honour? Is this your last game? And Jimmy Anderson just hurried up the Australians as if to say, no, 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 not today. <laughs> yeah, I think um, he said it quite a few times now that, you know, he feels he still has some something in his tank and he's, uh, he wants to go for longer and rightfully so. I think he's earned the right to decide when he can call it off. He's been uh, somebody who's terrific, number one fast bowler in terms of wickets taken, top of the pile and both of them have been um, a great strength to English cricket over a period of time. So it's been uh, an absolute honour to watch them do, do their thing their way. You know, in many ways they've got me off so many times I don't have great memories of them on the field, but off it I think uh, <laughs> there's been plenty made. There's certainly a feel of potentially this fairy tale ending for Stuart Broad as well. And a little bit of a fairy tale because he hit a six off his last ball that he ever faced I, in I Test know, Cricket. Typical Stuart Broad, <laughs> basically. Uh, I follow a, a Twitter side called um, Stuart Broad is batting uh, and they put that that's all folks when he hit that six and that Brilliant. was it. That's the last thing they're going to put out there. Last six. I think only Wayne Daniel and Stuart Broad mm have hit their last ball for six to end their career. I mean, that's, a, that, that's typical Stuart Broad. <laughs> Jimmy Anderson was the last wicket to fall. Todd Murphy picked up him, which meant that he took four for, for the game as well. England leading by 383 runs. The quick turnaround. Usman Khawaja and David Warner come out to bat. Pretty much knew Stuart Broad was going to be bowling because the whole crowd by this stage had spent the 10 minutes just revving him up as well. He was coming in from the pavilion end. There was going to be a question whether or not he was going to take strike as well because Usman Khawaja and David Warner usually just take it in turns, but sometimes it depends on who's actually bowling. Were you surprised that David Warner took the first ball? A little bit. You know, consistently now in this series so far, the la in the two test matches that I've been part of, Manchester and here, I think Usman Khawaja took strike uh, mm -hmm. and... Uh, you know, it's obviously a match-up and you don't want to you know, let Warner take the first ball. And it's understandable. I think they're good mates as well. They've grown up together. They, you know, they played age group cricket together. So, they understand each other well. So, today when David Warner took strike, it in a way sends a message as well that he's up for the battle. And you could see right from the outset, he was ready for it. Batted really well. Pretty anticlimactic. I think somewhere, subconsciously, a lot of people were expecting England to pick up a few wickets. Things rolling along the direction of England consistently, yeah. which has been the case in the last three days. But today was a bit different. Nass, you mentioned the sun was out when England came out to bat and pretty much as soon as Australia came out to bat. It's like the Truman Show. That they're it just is, controlling the weather. It the is. clouds came yeah. in and it was overcast. And to DK's point, it felt as if everything was sort of going in England's favour. Uh, absolutely. And you look at yesterday's weather. It was bright sunshine. It was warm. It was perfect batting conditions. And England used those conditions and put their foot down. And like I say... 11 o'clock, bright sunshine, quarter past 11, 20 past 11, the clouds come rolling in and then the weather forecast changes and we're looking at our radars and we see rain at around about 2, 3 o'clock. Um, but fair play to those. So I thought the pitch changed a bit today. I thought it lost all its pace. It's almost mm. sucked out. That sun yesterday sucked it out. So it felt more from an English type pitch to a subcontinent type pitch where England have just been to Pakistan and there was no pace and you have to reverse it, bowl some cutters and then your spinner comes into play. It was noticeable this morning in warm-ups, Moeen was having a bowl, and he bowled for a quite a while, but there was not much pace on it. And also the other person who was having a bowl was Ben Stokes. And Ben Stokes, if it reverses, becomes a handful. Um, so they were waiting for reverse swing England. I think a few people from the Australian camp, I'm looking at myself and Ricky Bonning and Mark Taylor, were a little bit critical of uh, Usman Khawaja and also Manus Lubbershane at the top of the order in the first inning, just about their intent to score. But it certainly looked from both Warner and Khawaja there was a different approach today. Yeah, uh, in fact, uh, you know, back in our back room, I was trying to get some information from Srini, our cricket person, and he was saying, 
In the first innings, they bowled a lot outside the off stump to Kwaja and his intent percentage, is, you know, the shot making thing was about 14%. But in the second innings, it was 33%, but they also bowled a lot straighter. You could see, I think he brought a lot of intent to the table today. You could see with the, he didn't probably, you know, he still ended up with a strike rate of 50, which is understandable, but the intent was there right from the outset. And just like what NASA said, I think the pitch also played its part. It's become slightly better to bat on very subcontinental conditions, but they did make use of it really well. And also, you could see Moin not being at his best. You know, when you have a groin injury, it can be hard on the body because you know you need to land, you need to pivot, and all of that will happen a lot lesser if you're carrying with a niggle. Intense, not just hitting boundaries and getting your strike rate, no, running yeah. as well. They ran well yeah. in that first innings. I think Usman Khawaja got stuck at one end. Labashain got stuck at Woods and you did a good piece at T about early in the over that Labashain got out. Not only was the bales flipped over by Broad, <laughs> but there was a single that Usman Khawaja turned mm. down. So the running, and David Warner needs someone like that. He lives off running and changing because they're so different. Warner's at you, coming at you. Khawaja's hanging back in the crease. So left-handed, yes, but two different types of players that England have to change their lengths to. So Ben Stokes went to Broad and Anderson to root to Moeen Ali, and then we sat there and waited and waited and waited and waited, and there was no Mark Wood in that first session to play. It had us all scratching our heads. Oh, you know, to be fair to Ben Stokes, he's done that quite a bit to the com box at least, because we've been predicting a certain way with which captains <laughs> would make their moves, but we've got it wrong a lot of the times. I think, uh, you know, he definitely thinks very differently about the game, and you can see with the way he does things as well. He's brought a different attitude. There's a, you know, there's a massive shift in the way they do things but also these bowling changes sometimes baffles you and this was another occasion where we were waiting for Mark Wood to come at some point of time yes probably when the ball gets slightly older Duke's ball tends to uh, tends to swing maybe they're planning to get it reverse but we didn't see him almost until the 30 second over, which is pretty uh, surprising Butch did a, a nice little piece at third is trying to describe a reason why he hadn't been brought on yeah, and Butch nailed it as ever, you know, bowling spinners to scuff up one side. Ravi Jadeja did it here, didn't he, against England, because yes. he bowls like that and he undercuts it, and then uh, the Indian seamers came on at the other end and got it reversing. So that's what you do at this ground, you wait till it reverses, and Stokes and Wood are England's two best reverse swing bowlers. I think he could have just gone a bit earlier because of what was coming. A, the rain is coming. And B, when the rain comes, that reverse disappears a bit. That ball gets wet, gets swollen, it doesn't reverse. So I think he may have just, could have just gone to Wood a couple of overs earlier, if only for the reason to get that crowd up. Yeah. That expectation <laughs> this morning and the broad factor, they were up. And that partnership, as it went along, they died and died and died. And after lunch, they were low just to get the crowd up. And the moment Wood started warming up, you could sense the crowd felt, here we go, this is what we've been waiting for. <laughs> but what was interesting for me was he just pulled the one over but walked out after that. So I don't know if he's yeah. physically fit or is there yeah. probably not had a bad tummy. You know, we don't know that. But for the moment, he just pulled the one over for the day. Yeah, and the crowd did get up and then he hit Usman Khawaja at the, at the back yeah. of the head. It was, a, it was a nasty blow. It took a while to, to assess him, but thankfully A-OK. -okay. But that's what Mark Wood can do. Absolutely. I think, you know, you straight away you saw Usman Khawaja jumping and defending a few. The change in pace, just an absolute, you know, fast bowler in action is always something great to watch. I think the crowd loves it. And also, you could see the batsman being hurried up a little bit, the kind of shots being played. In just the one over, things happened. The, one, the blow to the head didn't look good. But, you know, everything is well and Khawaja batted on after that and, you know, you're happy about that, which is the most important part. But you could see what pace does. It does have a massive impact on the match. The other surprise in terms of the bowling side for England was the beamer to Warner from Jimmy mm -hmm. Anderson. And we were on comms at the time and I th Wardy just said, I don't think I've ever seen him bowl yeah. a ball like that. that. Metronomic accuracy just shows that he's just not at his best. It, we didn't need that beamer to tell us that, but it just sort of confirmed that. We've seen Jimmy this summer... You know, he's not been at his best. He's, what, 10 wickets away from 700 test match <laughs> wickets. Um, and it didn't just surprise us or Jimmy. It surprised David Warner. Yeah. Uh, and War Warner ended up on his backside, but he still managed to scoop it over third. An immediate apology from Anderson, but um, he's not been at his best. Um, not the rhythm. And now, on this pitch now, he's going to have to go back to all those new skills he learned in Abu Dhabi and Dubai, mm. the cutters, the reverse swing. Um, but one thing's for certain, he'll keep going right to the last ball of this Ashes. A lot of people have been saying that David Warner hasn't been at his best either. Uh, he's put on 58 not out alongside Kawaja at the moment. Do you look at David Warner in this innings and think that uh, he's getting back to that kind of space? 
I wouldn't jump into that so early, but yes, he's batted really well. I think he's got starts in a lot of these test matches, and when he looks back at it, I think he will be, you know, a little, for lack of a better word, a little upset with himself for not making that big score because he got set. In England, the toughest part is getting set. He got that done. Today, in this pitch, which in many ways is great batting conditions, yes, the weather at times was cloudy, but the pitch played its part and it was really good to bat on. He really looked like he wanted to make a score out there. It's not like he didn't in the other innings, but I think there was, a, there was an effort in trying to keep the intent, but also making sure that he sticks to his plan. Mm -hmm. And that was what was good to watch. I think somewhere during this test series, there have been times when he second-guessed himself. And that's not the one we know. He is somebody who comes out exactly crystal clear with what he wants to do and just lives by it. And I think this series, he's doubted himself at times, which is normal considering what happened to the, what happened in the previous Ashes and his record in England. But this inning, so far, he's looked really good. OK, quarter to three when the rain came down and the teams left the field. Australia, 135 for none. Let's fast forward to tomorrow morning and hope that all this weather has, has passed on by. What's the thought overnight for England? The forecast is a little bit better. Listen, if, the, if Australia chase down 370-odd and win the game, Stokes and McCallum and the England side will just so well played. Hmm. Brilliant. You know, to do that, not many sides do that. We gave you a chance. You've gone, we had to win the game. What they won't want is the weather like Old Trafford coming and interrupting because then they'll feel really hard done by. They've played a lot of good cricket again in this test match. The feeling is, I, uh, my feeling is that they are still slight favourites. Even with that start, Australia have to start again. The pitch is spinning. You know, day five oval pitch does turn. Um, hopefully it gives Mo and Ali the rain, just gives Mo and Ali a little bit more time to get better from that groin strain. Root, as we've seen in the last couple of games, is a very useful off spinner. Australia have two left-handers in and they have Head, Carey, Stark in the middle late order. So that's what off spinners like. Set up perfectly, Mel. Last day of a magnificent series. And we still don't know, <laughs> is it going to be 2-1, two, 2 all? You know, what's it going to be, 3-1, yeah. 2 four, nine, or 10 wickets? Yeah, so for Australia, would they be thinking they're slightly behind or slightly ahead, DK? I think when they walked in today, they were definitely behind. But they leave this ground today thinking, you know what, we've got a chance of making it 3-1. And that's where the pressure kicks in. To know that you have a chance at it and then go out there and do it. I back Australia, and I only simply say that because... I believe there are people out there who will be playing their last, last ashes and they want to make a mark at it. And mm -hmm. I know England's done what England's done. And, and the beauty about the series is they've constantly spoken about entertaining and that they've done brilliantly. Yeah. But Australia somewhere have done things their way and the last two test matches haven't exactly gone to plan for them. And here is a chance to make amends to what they've done. And also England will reflect back on whether, at times, could they have gone on to make a bigger score. Australia has done that same mistake but here is a chance for them in many ways to get a retribution so time will tell I'm going 51 Australia 49 England well tomorrow is going to be a brilliant day <laughs> have you kissed and made up with Ricky Ponting after doing that <laughs> third man on him with the run out I mean we've done every other run out every other dismissal and yeah. poor old Ricky was was not having you having Stuart Broad run him out on this ground <laughs> <laughs> so you know, that was the highlight for me today. I really quite enjoyed it. I must admit, I missed all the cricket that was played backstage. I really enjoyed it. It was a highlight for us as well. <laughs> Poor Ricky. He's had grape gate. He's just been... He's just gone yeah, on. And on. We've, all been, we've all been asked to do our moments of the series. I was so keen to do Ricky Ponting being great. pelted by grapes and watching Ricky's reaction. I hope, I hope Rishi Sunak is watching and he calls me. To the <laughs> <laughs> he reckons that I should get honorary citizenship. There you go. Um, you heard it I first right here on Sky Sports Ashes podcast. Uh, it could be 2-1, it could be 2-all, it could be 3-1. We just don't know. We'll find out tomorrow, though. Please join us then. Quarter past ten right here on Sky Sports Cricket.